Hello everyone, welcome back to On The Fly. Today we're going to recap the conclusion of the men's Olympic hockey event. Uh, so jumping right onto it with the scores from today's games. Uh, we're going to start off in the bronze medal game with Sweden taking on Slovakia. Uh, and in this game, Slovakia upset the Swedes yet again uh, on their quest to their first ever bronze medal, their first ever medal at the Olympic Winter Games uh, in terms of the hockey event. Obviously, they won other medals. Uh, but in terms of hockey, this was their very first medal uh, ever. So it was a very big step for them. They did come fourth in 2010. Um, and that really is a big step for Team Slovakia, obviously never having, uh, never really having a shot. I mean, many teams, including myself, counted them out right at the start of the tournament before they went on their little run, knocking out the U.S. Um, and that, that game was really the start. I think that sort of gave them the momentum. Uh, you look at a player like Patrick Rybar and Juraj Slavkovsky. Uh, Slavkovsky is a young guy who just continues to dominate, even though he's playing with guys that are 10, 15 years older than him. Uh, and I think he's going to be quite the prospect coming up. I think Shane Wright's uh, spot in this draft is going to be contested as a, as a rightful number one. Uh, after the tournament he's had, it is going to be very apparent quickly uh, whether or not Wright is going to be up there still. Take a look at that junior tournament coming up as well. Whether or not he'll be there, obviously the draft would have gone. So if he gets drafted and has to go straight away into the NHL, I don't believe he will be there in August. Uh, unless, of course, Slavkovsky is the number one pick. And then we start to look at what's going to happen in this draft class. It is a very good draft class. Um, but with that, obviously Slavkovsky is starting to make his way up in the ranks. Uh, originally he was ranked at number five. I think as of now, uh, he is looking at least top three, if not higher. And, and just sort of the way he plays, uh, he, he's sort of like the next Obi. And many people have compared him to that. Uh, where you take a look, he isn't the greatest skater in the world. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's there. Uh, he's gonna, he has a wicked shot and he's able to get that puck off uh, in a split second. Kind of like a Matthew shot in terms of the quickness. On the power of a guy like Obi. So uh, when you take a look at him, he's quite the player, and I really do like the way he plays. Um, but with that being said, we'll move on to the goaltender and sort of the story of the game uh, with Patrick Rybar getting a shutout against Sweden. Uh, and that really was a, a great game from Rybar. I mean, he stopped 30 shots, uh, a little bit less, 28. But uh, he basically stopped 30 shots against a, a solid Swedish team. Uh, and then Slovakia sort of just provided that offense, which they haven't really given uh, Rybar all tournament. And that's where we are, right? We have Slavkovsky providing the offense, Rybar taking care of the defensive side. Uh, and that is Team Slovakia right there. And they just won a bronze medal in the men's Olympic hockey event. Uh, so congrats to them. And speaking of history, moving on to the gold medal game between Finland and Russia. Uh, Finland finally winning their first ever gold medal in the hockey event, the men's hockey event. Uh, and this was yet another big step for Team Finland and Finnish hockey, uh, as obviously they, they've been close. They've come twice uh, in 06 and I believe 78, 68, um, a long time ago, we'll put it that way. Um, but with that, Finland j just sort of dominating play uh, for the most part, uh, aside from maybe the second period. Uh, that was really the only time where they did not really control the game. Took over uh, pretty much in the third period. Uh, and didn't even let the goaltender from Russia come out of the net at the end of the game. Uh, they did go down early, one nothing, came back, uh, tied the game at one to the second. Uh, and then in the third period, went up two to one. Uh, and that was the end result. So Finland knocking off the Russians uh, in, in upset fashion, I would uh, attest as well, because uh, I take a look at Russia. They were the favorites coming into this third tournament. Uh, they always are going to be due to their KHL league as long as the Olympics are not the, or the NHL rather are not in the Olympics. Uh, Russia is going to be the team to beat. Uh, and that's sort of how it's always been. You even look at sort of the Miracle on Ice teams. Uh, that sort of stretch of period where, where they were the Soviet Union, uh, they were dominant because they took just from their strictly from their KHL league. Uh, and no one could really play against them or with them. Now we take a look at the Finnish uh, program, uh, who's absolutely don dominated in this tournament as well. Uh, and I, I, I'm very happy for Team Finland, obviously. Uh, anytime the Russians lose, it's a good thing. Sorry, Russians, but uh, we do like to see Russia lose sometimes. And Finland is the team to do it this year. So uh, big congrats to Finland on their first ever gold medal. And Russia does come in second with the silver, silver medal. Uh, so taking a look at the final standings, uh, we start off with the host Chinese in 12th, Latvia in 11th, 10th for Germany, 9th for the Czech Republic, 8th for Switzerland, 7th for Denmark, 6th for Canada, 
fifth for the US, four for Sweden, three for Slovakia, two for Russia, and number one for Team Finland. Uh, so once again, this is the finale for this tournament for the Olympics. Uh, that's the last we will see of hockey. Obviously, the women's have concluded uh, with Canada first place, U.S. in second, and Finland in third. Uh, and that, that's yet another solid event, uh, another great Olympic uh, time has come and gone and we do hopefully await for the next one and I really do just want to touch lastly uh, on the NHL obviously the NHL is a big part of hockey coming in uh, and that sort of was one of the big storylines coming to this tournament is how would the uh, loss of NHL players affect teams at this tournament and um, we even look at sort of what happened right we have Slovakia who isn't necessarily a top end nation coming into the tournament but they still managed to dominate in this tournament. Uh, and that's sort of just where the NHL players come in. You look at Canada, the U.S. I don't believe the U.S. with NHL players would lose to a team like Slovakia. Uh, and even Canada and Sweden. I think Canada has a better shot against Sweden. Uh, and I don't even think they make it that far. I think Canada knocks off the U.S. Uh, in their group. And then that sort of gets them to a similar spot playing a team like Slovakia. Uh, and then they'll move on a little bit easier. Uh, I do hope for the next Olympic event uh, that there will be NHL players because if there aren't, unfortunately the event just isn't as exciting as it normally is. You don't get the best players. Uh, and if you do want to grow the women's game, I mean, you even look at sort of the metrics uh, of how many people watch. It was over four and a half million people watching the gold medal game uh, between Canada and the US just on CBC's network alone, the Canadian Broadcasting Company. And that is absurd. That's obviously a, a record. I mean, uh, when you take a look at it, that is amongst the best ratings we've seen uh, pretty much all time uh, in terms of women's hockey. And it is impressive to keep growing that game. It is important. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we still have to take note of what's uh, important, right? We want to see the best players on the ice at all times. Uh, and, and even in this tournament, it wasn't as important to people because you're not getting the best players. When, you're, when you have another league to watch that's important to you, you don't want to watch this, especially when it's late. You know, it's it's 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night for most people on, on the North American zones. And uh, for me, even watching some of the Canada games, you're up till 2, 3 in the morning. And you have school the next morning, waking up at 6, 7. So you're really losing three hours of sleep. So uh, I think if the event is to take place again, uh, you have to either send NHLers there and make it more exciting uh, or fix your game time so it helps everybody. And even on the in European teams, I mean, they were playing games at 3 o'clock in the morning, which doesn't really help anybody, right? You take a uh, look at a team like Sweden who's having to play these early morning games. That doesn't help them. I mean, at the end of the day, I think there, there does have to be some changes uh, to this overall tournament. NHL players are the first step. Uh, and I do hope that they do come. Uh, but with that, I would like to thank all you guys for watching the Olympic recaps, uh, the Olympic previews, all of it. Uh, it means a lot. We have grown quite a bit with this channel, uh, and I very much do uh, appreciate every single one of you. If you made it this far in the video, thanks for watching. If you'd like to drop a like, if you really like to consider subscribing, tell all your friends and leave a comment down below your thoughts on the Olympic Winter Games of 2022. Until next time, see ya.